Hi, my name is Lisa Florashek and I am an instructor here at ASUBB and I teach art, but I don't teach pop-ups, which is one of my favorite things to do. So I thought I would share it with you. Um, before I get started on how to make this basic monster um, and give you some ideas on how to elaborate it and make it, on, make it your own, I wanted to show you some books that I use. Um, and this one is my favorite. It's my oldest one, but it's my favorite. And, uh, last but not least. Oh, actually, no. This is my oldest one. I don't use it as much, <laughs> but it's still a good one. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so let's get started with some, what you will need is some paper. That's the first thing you'll need. And I use a two, basically a two piece construction on all of my cards so that the mechanical part gets pretty much done, well, sort of, pretty much done aside from the, um, the back finishing piece so, so that when you have your card folded nicely, everything fits and you don't really understand that um, there's all these mechanics that have been glued into it. So when you open it up, it pops up. It's kind of fun. So I'm going to finish this for you. So the first thing that I did um, is I made a fold of a piece of the paper that was going to go on the outside. And I knew that I was gonna put a tongue for this monster in here. So I um, kind of marked out where that was gonna go. And then I built this and I'll show you how I got to that. So, and then I'll go on to finishing. So the first thing I'm gonna do for my inside piece is I'm gonna fold it. And once I, and I'm gonna really take care to crease where I have my edges nice and even. And then I'm gonna decide where I want my mouth to open. And I'm gonna go right about here. So this is the back side or the inside face of my, um, my construction. And I'm gonna make a solid line because I'm gonna cut there. I'm going to make some dotted lines where I'm going to fold. And I'm just doing that for the camera because it's something that will, might help you understand. So once I cut, this will be the mouth, the opening. Then I am going to fold this back and forth a couple of times. And what I mean by back and forth um, is fold it in this manner and then I'm going to turn it around. So I'm gonna use what we call this a bone folder, but you can use the edge of your scissors. You can use a pen or a pencil to make that nice crisp crease. And that's important because that will give your, your paper a nice score to it. Now I'm gonna Bend it back over to the other way. And this will give it the ability to pop through. So next thing I was going to do, I'm going to do is because this meets like that. So that'll be completely closed mouth. I, and you can see I added teeth and stuff. So I'm going to give this some lips or some kind of mouth structure cut it away and give it a gap. So again, just because I just went with my scissors, I'm gonna make a cut line here so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna cut along that line. And you can use any kind of paper. I went to Walmart and I got a package of colored paper. Um, and um, I like the neon colors just because I think they're fun when I'm doing this. Um, but you can use any kind of paper. And I save my scraps. So now 
if I open this up, it doesn't look like much yet, but what I can do is it's gonna fold this way. So I have to um, push, I'm gonna fold this back this way so that I can get that going out again. And then I'm going to fold this, but push the this part out. So this is always a little tricky. And I'm gonna just kind of open and close this a little bit. So basically I turned the fold to the inside so you can see it's popping out. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this guy some teeth. So, um, I don't know. I think I always think green is a fun color for teeth. Let's see, do I have any scrap? I save my scraps so that I don't have to keep cutting whole pieces of paper. You know, the best thing is though, is that you can use any paper. So if you don't have the ability to go get colored paper, but you have a whole bunch of magazines or stuff laying around or newspaper, you can go ahead and use those and they can be really cool to, to make things out of. And because you can color them the way you want um, with crayons or, or watercolor, um, you can not worry about that either. You know, we just make it what you need to make it. And I'm just gonna get cut some really interesting gnarly teeth here. And I'm just cutting them all at once. I folded it over so my top and bottoms were similar, but um, and then I'm gonna cut it in half and see how I'm gonna fit it. And I could have folded it the other way like this to see how it would fit, but um, I also wanted to change so everything, what you have to understand about pop-ups is everything is done on the fold. I think I'll just glue this in so that it stays there. So um, this is going to, this is going to get glued into the inside of my mouth and pop through that hole. So. Here we got some teeth kind of hanging out there, popping out. Boy, they're pretty scary, aren't they? And now I'm gonna do the bottom set. And I'm gonna figure out how I wanna do that. Maybe we'll give him one tooth. Why am I saying him? Maybe it's a her. We'll put one tooth over here, popping out. What's nice about doing everything from the back side is that nobody sees your glue marks and you can make mistakes back there and nobody will care. So here we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this down and look at it for a second because it's hard to see while I'm doing doing what I was doing. And I want to see to make sure that they close well. When uh, they fit together well. Okay. So if I were to take this guy and put him aside and put this over here, you can see that that tongue will pretty much match up just because I had an idea of where that was gonna come out, the center hole. So um, I can go ahead, I've left those that center um, without anything because I wanted to make sure I had room for a tongue. And let's go, we have some other paper here. So we'll use this purple paper. So my goal is to have that pop out like that. And um, I'm gonna have it glued to the back so it'll come to right about there. 
So I'm gonna fold myself a tab first so that I know where I'm gonna be able to glue to the paper behind it. And then I'm gonna fold this, sorry, in half here, the tongue goes in half, so that this will, when the card closes, the tongue will close as well. Because that's important. So when the card closes, I wanna make sure that that closes with it. Okay, we'll put this one aside and we'll finish this one. So, I don't think I'm gonna add any more to this. Um, you, you can see I added some eyes and I'll show you how I made these spring components for the eye, eyelids and I'll show you how, or obviously I just cut those out, and, but I'll show you all kind of options here. Okay, so I've applied glue to the back of this um, piece and you can see where I've glued my mouth in and cut out the um, pieces. And now I'm gonna put the tongue through the hole and line up my spine, the spine being that fold, and line up my paper, and I'm gonna glue it. Now, the reason why I'm skipping to this step is because I'm gonna do one more step after I get this all glued down, and I wanna let the glue set up a little bit. So we'll put this aside again. So it's kinda like that, you know, test kitchen thing. And I'm just gonna give it a, a quick crease and I'll put this aside and I'll show you what we do with it in a minute when the glue sets up a little bit. And I'll put the clothespins here. So I use clothespins to cl clip things together in a lot of times because I wanna, I wanna be able to sometimes see what th something's gonna look like. So I'll use the clothespins to help this stand up. And so where were we? So um, we're gonna use a backing piece to this. So I'm gonna figure out where this tongue is gonna get glued in. Line it up. And sometimes I just take a pencil and I mark on the back piece of paper through the mouth so I know where to go ahead and glue that tongue in. And I wanna make sure that this fold that I did down the middle goes in both directions. Another thing, it's always good to fold your folds in both directions, because then it'll fold whichever direction you want it to fold when you need it to. Okay, I'm gonna line this, this fold and this fold up, and I'm gonna line this up with the little dot that I made. One of my favorite things to do with paper, besides making cards and pop-up books, is um, I love making paper hats. And I use a lot of these same sculpture techniques, techniques to make paper hats. Let's see how his tongue is doing here. He looks pretty good. Alrighty, so now for some eyes. What color should I use? I think I'm gonna go with that same blue that I used on the outside. A lot of times I'll repeat colors um, throughout the piece and limit my color scheme to about three or four. And because this is gonna be a scrap piece, I'm gonna cut it in half. So I'm not wasting a whole piece. I 
want my eyes to be fairly big. Okay, so I'm gonna make them fairly symmetrical and I always cut things symmetrical and then I trim the way I want afterwards. So I've folded the paper and when I mean symmetrical, it's that I'm actually just making them the same. I'm not really making them symmetrical, sorry. That's a wrong term. But I wanna make two identical pieces. So I'll usually do it on the fold and then cut the fold away afterwards. trim it and then I have these two eye shapes here but then I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do these different than or one of these different so I want this to pop up too and so I'm gonna make a fold I have to think about this for a minute and I'm gonna make a fold and then I'm gonna cut from down from that folded line um, I folded this, one of these eyes, these are gonna be the eyes. I folded one of them right at that, that um, joint in the, where it got small. And I folded it just so that I can have a guidance on where I want to um, create this feature. And I'm going to draw something. Actually, I'm just gonna make like a donut type cutout, but I'm drawing it out so that you can see. And essentially, this won't be cut. I'm not going to break that fold. Notice I put some dotted lines, but I am gonna cut away on the outside. And I'm gonna use a knife. You can use scissors for this. Sometimes I find that a knife gives you a little bit less of a jagged line. Um, Ideally, if you're using a knife, this table's in pretty bad shape, but if you're gonna use a, a, an X-Acto knife, please use something underneath it. This table already has a lot, of, a lot of cuts and lots of paint on it, so that's why I haven't been as careful here. But if this was on my mother's dining room table, you bet that I'd have something underneath me when I was working. Okay, so now at that fold, I have if I were to do this, I have a place, like an eyelid, where I could put eyelashes. I could put an eyeball behind it. Um, and then we're gonna show you something with this. Here, I'm tra I've traced around this piece, identical piece in pink. And here I'm gonna make a spring that pops up instead. And well, then we'll put some pink behind the eye. I think we're gonna make a pink eye. Or maybe we'll make a, and we'll put some white behind it. I don't know. I wish you were here so I could ask you. That's half the fun. All right, so I have this pink piece now. I'm gonna decide. I'm going to start cutting right about here in the middle and I'm gonna cut around the contour of the piece as if I was gonna go into a spiral. Um, I don't wanna cut all the way through or I don't wanna cut all the way out. I wanna cut, keep cutting until I have this one long ribbon that's in the shape of the eye that we just created. And now I'm getting too thin, so now I'm gonna cut that little inside piece off like that. So this eye, let's see, should we do it that way? Oh, that might look nice. We could do it that way, or we can do it this way. I think I like it the other way. So we'll go this way. 
and this way and we can offset it. Now, one of the things I found about creating like this is that when you offset things and you don't make things look all perfect and um, the same or symmetrical, I guess, because it's on a face and it's across the line here, um, it, they have a little bit more interest. So that eye is gonna look like this and this eye is gonna look like we're gonna create a few little things here with some scrap paper. I need some black and I need some white. I'm going to put this eye here um, and use it to trace. The thing about pop-ups is that if you hide your mechanics, everybody thinks it's so difficult, and it really wasn't. Oh, I made a mistake, but I can figure that out. Hold on. So I'm gonna glue that white piece to this blue piece, and it's not bit that big of a mistake, but I made a mistake. What I wanted to do was to trace this line here. Out that I made. So I don't know if you can see that, but I, I traced this part that's sticking up um, onto a little piece of black paper, and I'm gonna kind of give it a little bit of a trim here and make it look more like a teardrop. And I'll show you what's gonna happen. or like a bubble caption. And then on the inside, I'm gonna just give it a little bit of, of a cut. Smaller a little bit of a cut that's um, following that same curve, but then I'm gonna cut little tabs because it is a curve. I'm gonna cut little tabs to the line. I don't know that I'm gonna need them, but sometimes I like doing that because it gives me a little bit more flexibility when I glue it in place. So that is gonna get glued, bent up and glued. Yeah, I'm gonna use the tabs. So I'm gonna bend that up and I'm gonna glue it back behind this little piece there. I'm gonna make it pop out a little bit more. So you see my bent my tabs up and then I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on the tabs. And I'm gonna glue those tabs to the inside. This eyelid that I, I showed you, I. I took the liberty of taking a piece of black paper and tracing around the edge of it. And um, it kind of got glued here because there was a little bit of glue stuck. So I'm gonna actually carefully peel it off. And I'm gonna cut this out. These are gonna be my cool eyelashes. We'll give them like dad lashes, you know. Old man lashes. The papas are gonna hate me for saying that because now you're gonna go and you're gonna look at their lashes and see if they're all over the place. Their lashes or their eyebrows, one of the two. But we'll, we'll live with it. Okay. So now I'm gonna glue this on. Put some 
glue on. Actually, I should put it on here. And this should fit because I traced around it, but it should fit. I'll put some glue there. And I'm going to line up my fold with the. And there we go. So I'm building this eye structure off the off the card and I'm gonna wait till this glue sets up a little bit but I can curl up these lashes. So so far we've got the mouth with the tongue coming through. We've got an eye with some lashes and I think that eye needs an eyeball, don't you? going to make this eye. And I think we decided that it was going to go that way. So let's Sometimes I actually use a brush with my glue and I probably should have done that today. Um, I use a brush to kind of control how much I put on and how how um, thin it is and so that I don't get any of these like wrinkly lines um, that you see in that first card as it's drying. Um, a brush will control that. Okay, So I put this pop-up structure on this second eye and you see that there's a little tab there for my eyeball. I'm going to take another piece of black scrap here. And I'll cut an eyeball. There's a pupil. And there's some white scrap here. And I'm going to cut a round rudimentary circle. And I'm going to put that pupil in the circle. that I made. So tabs are something, they're basically just little folded pieces of paper that allow you to have a support structure to your construction. So now I have this eyeball. There's one other thing I want to do to this before I glue everything together. So, so far we have a mouth and we have two eyes and we'll put those on in a minute. But I want it, I want to put this little fly over here, this like little butterfly that I made see. Over there, um, and I want it sticking out, and I want to be able to have it stick up like that so it's its own little pop-up. And the way I'm gonna do that is first I'm gonna make some tabs. I'll take some, oh, sorry, I did make some tabs. I took two little pieces of paper about the same length and, and height and width and it, so that if I glued them together they would look like a T. I folded the tops down and um, I'm not going to glue them together but you'll see you see how like they push together like that they form that T. And then I'm going to take one of those pieces and use it as a template here and decide, I think I'm going to put that little butterfly here. So I'm going to draw a line and that line I'm going to cut through. I'm just going to cut a little slot for those tabs to go through. Don't take much. And then I'm going to see where I folded those tabs. I'm going to glue those to the back of the butterfly to, the, to where this black, I'm not going to go much further up than where the black is on the butterfly, that black um, body. So like that. And 
I always get myself in the way, my glue in the way of the camera, sorry about that. And like that. So if it, this is what I have. I have a butterfly essentially on a stick. Okay, on a stick of paper. And I'm gonna take that paper and I'm gonna feed it through my little slot here. So now the butterfly is sitting kind of upright and has a little bit of body to it rather than sitting flat glued against the paper. And I'm gonna take those tabs that I had on the back and you guessed it, this is why the back is great. It's great to have the back in, that go in the middle of a card because it's like a great hiding spot. Nobody would know that that's attached with tabs. They'd just think, how did you get that glued there? All right, so let's see how this lines up. Hopefully it lines up nicely because we're in the money now, right? No turning back. I still put a lot of glue on there, so dot this off here. So one of the ways I can I can give my my eyelashes some body is I can fluff them up over my pencil like that. And I'm gonna glue the eye. Let's glue the eye right here at the bridge of the nose. The way that's sitting. I'm going to move glue this back down. Needs a little bit more, a little bit more body, so we're just going to glue it there. Sometimes the best laid plans just. And we'll glue this eye down. Paper's kind of thin, so I really need a brush, but a brush would help. So this side doesn't have any eyelashes, it just has a funny shape to it. And I can make that pop up a little bit more. I could give it eyelashes. I could give it really cool eyelashes, actually. Get some black paper. Trace around it a little. More to cut. Okay. the back of that eyeball. Okay. Now we're going to glue the card together. Uh-oh, what happened to her? happen here we're missing an eye oh it came up from my finger well I like giving it some layers so I'm gonna actually add
Bet your art teachers tell you just a dot, not a lot, and you're watching me make a mess with the glue. So I smoothed out my glue, and now I glued them together, and this is the, the result. Now I wanted to show you one thing you can do with your, your card does not have to be rectangular, and I don't like them rectangular. Um, so I'm gonna decide on how I'm gonna cut this, but I am gonna cut it um, so that, that it's not necessarily, I'm gonna glue on everything here, not necessarily a rectangular card. And what I'm gonna do actually is I can turn these cards into a book almost. Well, I mean, I can, I, I'll show you how. So I'm gonna cut the edge of my card as long as it's folded. I mean, you, can, you don't have to do it folded. You could do it however you want, but this way they'll meet up. Um, the edge of this card and the edge of this card, I'm gonna cut the same way. Make sure I'm going top to bottom now. Okay. Now if I wanted to turn this into a book, I'm gonna cut this away as well. Hopefully I'm not cutting through that butterfly. I didn't check, but hopefully we'll see. Now, I have two monsters that I could essentially glue together, or I could just have two monster cards. Or I could put something in between. If I wanted to put a different card in between that attaches the two together, I could do it that way as well. And then I could have a, you know, how did these two monsters meet kind of thing going on. So there you have it. Um, making books that fly, fold, wrap, hide, pop up, twist, and turn. This is the best book going. I would say go ahead and grab it. This is the other really good book, um, Pop Up Design and Paper Mechanics. This gives you some ideas of how to, to do things in some project, you know, some actual projects in here. Um, well, both of them do. This one's a little bit more detailed. However, this one's a little bit better written. So have fun with it, and I hope that you found a new summer activity.